Hey folks, if there was one car that I tested last year that was a bit of a surprising disappointment, it had to be the GTX 960 2GB. Now I say disappointment not in the sense that it's a bad card, far from it, but in the sense that I really expected it to come out on top when comparing it with the GTX 1050 Ti. Now, many of you rightfully pointed out in the comments that there is actually a 4GB model, and ever since uploading that video last year, revisiting the most popular Maxwell GPU, well actually the most popular GPU full stop until December 2017, where the 1060 finally overtook it, has been on my mind. So although the original GTX 960 2GB has been long since moved on, today we're going to be taking a look at this the 4GB GTX 960 Windforce Edition from Gigabyte. Now the 960 is built on a 28 nanometer process with 1024 shading units, 64 texture mapping units and 32 ROPs. It comes with 4GB of GDDR5, with all of that 4GB being on a 128 bit memory interface. At reference speeds, the GPU operates at a frequency of around 1127MHz and boosts up to around 1178, with its memory running at an effective speed of about 7GHz. Now the 2GB card it features the exact same specification, so it's not the same situation as the GTX 1060, where the 3GB version is a cut down version of the GPU feature in the 6GB. So what is the point in this test? Well it's a simple one, does that extra VRAM on the 4GB model? actually matter. So using the exact same test settings, rolling back their drivers to the latest at the date of the original testing and using the same Core i5-4590 coupled to 8GB of system memory as well as the same graphics card clock speeds, let's retrace our steps and see if there is actually any difference. First up we're using the canned Hitman benchmark and even after multiple runs through, it's clear that the 4GB card is actually considerably faster than the 2GB version. A 6.8% increase in average FPS and a 9.3% increase in the lows. It's a nice start for the 4GB card then. Moving on to the old favourite, Crisis 3, sees less impressive results. Around a 3% increase in the average frame rate and a single FPS increase on the percentage lows. Which is more within margin of error than anything else. Still, the 4GB card it powered through it looked great and temperatures kept low. Just as it did in the 2GB model. Hopping into Far Cry Primal, seeing the 4GB 960 beat out the 2GB card with increases to the average frame rate and average minimums to the tune of around 9%, and being much closer to hitting that magical 60fps mark for averages, which was great to see, especially in slow paced and immersive games where any hint of frame drops can be quite jarring and take you out of the immersion. Grand Theft Auto V was already a good performer on the 2GB 960, and it was kind of more of the same here. Under 2% increase in average frame rate was really nothing to write home about, but consistently higher average minimums, around 9% or so in fact, was great and keeping the minimums around 60fps, it resulted in a really really nice and smooth gaming experience. Skyrim SE seen gains as well, with an increase of 7% on the averages and a whopping 12% on the lows when using the more impressive spells and magic abilities. This meant that the experience was much more consistent with the average FPS settling around 60fps rather than the mid 50s and this led to a better looking game overall in my opinion. Finally Battlefield 1 and as we know we can get this game to run in a potato so I was surprised to see the 4GB again knocking the stuffing out of the 2GB 960. 8.6% increase in the average FPS and a frankly insane 22% increase in the average minimums meant a much smoother gameplay experience. So what's actually going on here then? Well, some things to note first. The Windforce card did boost a few megahertz higher, and I mean a few megahertz, not a few hundred megahertz, but it certainly wasn't enough to account for the differences that we've seen. Things do start to become a little bit clearer though when we look at exactly how much VRAM is being used on that 4GB card. Now in games like Far Cry Primal and GTA 5 there's often built in tools that estimate with the settings used how much of your graphics card's memory is going to be used in game. And in my previous tests that's exactly what I used to try and ensure we chose acceptable settings for the cards. Now in both games the estimated usage in the tools turned out to be quite severe in their underestimations. Looking at the chart, only Crisis 3 used less than 2GB of VRAM with GTA being a close second, but it was still almost half a gig out from the estimated usage in the settings menu. 
and incidentally these are the two games that performed most like they did on the 2GB card. Now system memory is much much slower than the memory you're going to have on your graphics card so when your system needs to swap things out of memory you're going to see a performance hit. Having more onboard memory means that less time is spent swapping back and forth using the much laggier system memory but also letting your CPU focus on feeding the GPU with instructions rather than have to manage calls back and forth between the graphics cards and the system RAM. On average it was seen 6% higher average FPS using the 4GB 960 than we did with the 2GB and around a 10% increase on the average minimums. And this places the GTX 960 in a much brighter light. The Maxwell GPU at its heart is obviously still capable, so I think it's perhaps a good time to go for a round 2 against the GTX 1050 Ti as we kick off 2018. But that's it for this test, the 960 has certainly redeemed itself in my eyes, especially in its 4GB guys. And if you can find one, it's going to be a cracking buy. But let me know what you think of it, with it still being used by over 10% of users on Steam, I'm sure there's a lot of you watching this that's already going to own one. Anyway folks, thanks for watching this, take care, and I'll see you all in the comments section down below, and in the next video.